Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Peter LaLampa, CEO of Grevy Zebra Trust, and Charlie Knowles, President and Co-Founder of the Wildlife Conservation Network. Oh, I guess I didn't do a very good job of disguising my voice. <laughs> well, a very warm welcome, and by that I mean the temperature as well as your uh, heartfelt enthusiasm. Uh, it is just so wonderful to uh, have you all here. Uh, my name is Charlie Knowles. And I'm Peter Lalampa. And uh, welcome to the 2024 Wildlife Conservation Network Expo. Um, <laughs> I want to start off by, um, oops, sorry. There we go. I want to start off by thanking our very generous sponsors, the Whittier Trust and the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation for sponsoring today. Thank you very much. And thank you to the amazing WCN uh, staff for doing such an amazing work, putting such an amazing event. I know you took a lot of time to do this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and most of all, I want to thank all of you for being here. In a uh, world that is so divisive, the WCN community is just absolutely extraordinary. Look around the room here, and some of you have been working decades and decades on wildlife conservation. Some of you have given countless hours of your time and given your treasure as well, and that makes it all happen. So thank you all so much for being a part of this incredible community. We've got an extraordinary day for you today of uh, some incredible conservation leaders, and uh, we're excited to get started on it. Um, first, by a show of hands, though, I would love to see how many people, is this your first fall expo that you've been to? Oh, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. As some of your other people here will tell you, it can be a life-changing experience, and I hope that's the case for you. How many of you have been to two or more WCN at Fall Expos? Five or more? Ten or more? Fifteen or more? Twenty or more? <laughs> so this is our 22nd one, so thank you all for, for that. And... Uh, I don't know how many of you were here 13 years ago when I stood in this exact spot and said, uh, I apologize, but I might leave on a moment's notice because my wife is pregnant and expecting any day with twins. And uh, sure enough, she delivered a week later. And um, a lot of you have come up to me and asked me about how they're doing and the like. So I thought I would just uh, be a, a proud papa and uh, share a little photo. There they are. That's uh, James and John. And um, this was back in uh, March when uh, we were celebrating Jane's 90th birthday, and she came. She's actually spoken at their school twice. That's pretty special for, for a kid. And um, some of you may have known that we, I've actually moved to Carmel, and we gave Jane a 90-dog salute on the Carmel Beach, which was covered in the New York Times, and even picked up on Saturday Night Live Weekend Update, which I was, <laughs> was a new pinnacle of success. Um, but WCN sponsored great events down there. We had Clint Eastwood join us, and then we uh, worked with Salesforce and worked with um, the Jane Goodall Institute to do events in San Francisco and New York, and how many of you attended any of one of those events, either in Carmel or, yeah, they were really, really special, and uh, most importantly, we raised two and a half million dollars to support Jane's work, so that was really terrific, but enough about me. Um, you don't believe that, do you? Um, <laughs> so... Um, WCN, for the people who are new here, I can give you our mission. Our mission is that we save endangered wildlife by partnering with local communities and supporting conservationists who develop solutions so wildlife and people can coexist and thrive. But I think it's much more impactful to tell you a story. And looking up on the stage here, you can see this story. I mean, we're virtually indistinguishable, young, tall, good-looking, <laughs> colorfully dressed. I will add that Peter's also a father of twins, so we do have that in common. But um, our story, I think, really illustrates um, what WCN is all about. And it was 22 years ago that I met with uh, John Lucas and Akiko Yamazaki, and we founded WCN. And what we really wanted to do was partner with communities directly to try and affect change for wildlife and, and uh, wild places. And uh, as a young pastoral boy, I had love and passion for my community, 
as well as for wildlife. And in year 2007, I joined Belinda Law in Grave Zebra Trust to conserve the graves in northern Kenya. That passion has led to this success that you see today of me standing here with Charlie Knowles and talking about conservation and communities. Yeah, and it was, uh, we met, I think, 13, 13 years ago at uh, WCN Expo here, um, became fast friends and supporters, and I've learned so much from Peter about uh, what it means to work with communities and visited um, where he grew up and he explained uh, about his home and, and his life. And it's that kind of direct partnership um, that has led us here today. And yeah, that's very true, Shelley. And I remember the first time, you know, I came here and through encouragement of WCN as well as Grave Zebra Trust, I applied for a scholarship to do my studies. And I went for my master's in the UK. You know, I grew up through the ranks that today I'm taking, I've taken over as the executive director of Grave Zebra Trust. And that's the success of WCN. And it's not nearly as impressive as being CEO of, or executive director of Grevy Zebra Trust, but um, Peter is also a board member of Wildlife Conservation Network. So he's, he's my boss, and he just keeps me in line. So, so I want to talk a little bit, especially for the, the new people, what WCN is and, and how we work. And from the philanthropist standpoint, um, I was frustrated by three things that in the whole philanthropic nonprofit world. One was a lack of transparency. I don't know where my money's going and what the impact is going to be. A lack of efficiency. I felt like a lot of money was being wasted on offices and salaries here in the U.S. when I'd like them to be going to the local communities. And a lack of collaboration that a lot of organizations say we can do everything soup to nuts. We don't need to partner with anyone else. Just give us your money. And looking at everything through what's called a lens of scarcity. There's one dollar and you're going to get it or I'm going to get it. There's going to be a winner. There's going to be a loser. And we think completely different. We think of there through a lens of abundance, that there's plenty of support, and if you can demonstrate impact, people will support it. And if they end up supporting a different organization, that's fantastic. That's why you'll see so many different organizations exhibiting here at the Expo for free. And in terms of the transparency, we let you decide where you want to support, uh, what organization. Uh, you can meet the person doing it. You can visit them in the field. You can understand the impact. And WCN will pass through 100% of the money directly to the organizations. In terms of efficiency, over 92% of our funds go to support programs. And Charity Navigator, which rates over 8,000 organizations on transparency and efficiency, gave WCN the per first perfect score of 100 on transparency, which we're very proud of. <laughs> and then in terms of collaboration, uh, last year we supported over 200 different organizations. Uh, we will partner with absolutely every everyone and anyone, and that's the only way that we're going to solve some of these big issues. So that's really core to what, it's, uh, what we are, and it seems to be working. Uh, through the generosity of a lot of you, we've raised and deployed over $350 million, um, which is just absolutely breathtaking. Um, and um, we uh, continue to grow, continue to have impact, and you'll hear a lot more about that from other people that you hear from today. But I want to talk about the three strategies that we use to, to uh, go, about, uh, go about doing this conservation work. And uh, the first strategy is supporting organization that works with the local communities to conserve wildlife, as well as working with the communities to make sure that wildlife and the people thrive and coexist. It also means that as they invest on this organization, we are able to tap into making this organization great making this organization have the impact that they need. And a good example is Grave Zebra Trust, that because of investment from Charlie Knowles, we are able to save the graves there. And a number of other organizations, a number of partners that are within this city, 126 partners are being supported by WCN. They are able to do the work because of support from general supporters like you. That's great. And the uh, second strategy is what we call our fund strategy. So fund strategy. It's fun, too, but it's fund strategy. And so we're, as Peter is talking about a specific species in a specific place, the funds work across the entire range. And that really came out of the Elephant Crisis Fund when uh, 13 years ago we saw that the population of elephants was cratering and it was way beyond just working in, in Kenya. And so with Save the Elephants, uh, we uh, founded the... Um, 
the Elephant Crisis Fund, which has been instrumental in turning the tide in the ivory poaching and is now working diligently on the um, human-wildlife conflict, which you'll hear about in just a minute. Um, but in addition to elephants, we started a fund, uh, the elephant, sorry, the Lion Recovery Fund, the Pangolin Crisis Fund, the Rhino Recovery Fund, a California wildlife program, which works on connectivity issues here in Northern California. And today we just announced a new uh, painted dog fund. It's going to look at African wild dogs across the continent. <laughs> and uh, a sneak peek, Paul's going to kill me for this, but... <laughs> I'm trying to convince Paul and the rest of the team that we should do sea otters as well. So we may see that coming. Yeah, here for sea otters. So that's our second strategy. And uh, the third strategy is supporting the rising leaders who are the next generation of conservationists. They have given out 217 scholarships in 47 countries. And it gives us hope for the next generation. A good example is Peter standing here. I couldn't have done my master's were it not for the rising leadership training. And it's just not just a training, but it's a lot. Apart from the scholarship, this training, this mentorship, that enables us to be better leaders in serving our organizations. Thank you. And uh, so that's kind of what WCN is. And I think Peter and Grevy Zebra is just a brilliant example. Uh, Belinda is a founder of Grevy Zebra Trust, past the, the mantle to Peter to run the organization this year. And I think we can all agree that having Africans run these organizations is really the future of, of conservation. And this is a, a living, breathing example. I will say that I think one challenge in doing these kind of transitions is maintaining the funding level. And because you have someone who's been working a long time. So I really encourage you to uh, support all these organizations. I personally support the Grevy Zebra Trust as well as other ones. Love the organization, and I would uh, encourage you to join me in that. So uh, welcome, and uh, it's so fantastic to have you all here. Really, really appreciate it. Appreciate all that you've done. And uh, now I'd like to uh, have Peter introduce our first speakers. <laughs> 